The U.S. Federal Bureau of Investigation, or FBI, has raised alarms over the possibility of a terror attack in the U.S. F the FBI's director, Christopher Wray, has warned the U.S. Congress against a possible organized attack. He said that the attack could be similar to the one in Russia last month that killed uh, scores of people. U.S. President Joe Biden hosted the leaders of Japan and the Philippines at the White House yesterday. The meeting largely focused on tensions between China and the Philippines in the South China Sea. As the meeting started, Biden pledged his support for the Japan and the Philippines. He said, and I quote, the United States defense commitments to Japan and the Philippines are ironclad. Meanwhile, South Korea, Japan and the United States are holding joint naval exercises. The two-day drills began yesterday. This comes amid threats from North Korea. In the past few months, North Korea ramped up the testing of nuclear-capable missiles. Meanwhile, on Wednesday, the region's leader, Kim Jong-un, said that now is the time to be prepared for war. Russian missiles and drones destroyed a large electricity plant near uh, Kyiv yesterday. Other power facilities were also hit across Ukraine. The attacks have further threatened Ukraine's embattled energy system. Meanwhile, Russian President Vladimir Putin has said that Russian attacks on Ukraine's power plants are a retaliation to Kyiv's offensive against Moscow. He made the comments while speaking to his ally, Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko. Putin said the strikes were part of the process of demilitarization in Ukraine. Mexico has asked the International Court of Justice to suspend Ecuador's membership. This is until Ecuador apologizes for its raid on Mexico's embassy in Quito. Diplomatic ties between the two countries were suspended last Friday. This was after the Ecuadorian police forcefully entered the embassy to arrest Vice President Jorge Glass. Chile's president, Gabriel Boric, has recalled his country's ambassador from Venezuela for cons consultations. This comes after Venezuela's foreign minister denied the existence of a notorious Venezuelan criminal gang. He dismissed the criminal organization Tren de Ar Aragua as a false narrative. Boric said that his statements were irresponsible and concerning. The Chilean president added that he would seek further information on the matter from his diplomat in the country. Meanwhile, union workers in Chile called for a nationwide strike yesterday. They were protesting for better wages and a new labor policy. Workers marched through the streets of Santiago towards the presidential palace. They have issued a series of demands including wage increases, an improved health care system and tax and pension reforms. Canada has reduced dozens of Indian staffers from its diplomatic missions uh, in the country. Ottawa has said that this is due to the unavailability of staff to manage and maintain its operations. This comes after India expelled dozens of Canadian diplomats amid a political escalation last year. A major tourism body from the Maldives is planning to conduct road shows across several key Indian cities. This is to woo Indian tourists back to the country. This comes after the number of Indian visitors to the Maldives declined in the last few months. The decline came after Mali received severe backlash for insulting India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The Italian Coast Guard have rescued 59 migrants in the central Mediterranean Sea. Meanwhile, it recovered nine bodies, including that of a young girl. This comes as Italy's Lampedusa Island has been overwhelmed with migrants. The island's authorities have raised concerns as hundreds have been arriving on a daily basis. Lawmakers in Poland have begun debating changes to the country's harsh abortion laws. The country has some of the strictest abortion laws in the European Union. It only allows abortions in the cases where the pregnancy has resulted from rape or incest or if it threatens the life or health of the mother. Liberalizing access to abortion was a central campaign promise of the Polish Prime Minister Donald Tusk, who took office last year. 
Portugal's Catholic Church has said that it will compensate child sexual abuse victims within the church. It said that the amount to be paid will be decided on a case-to-case -case basis. According to a report from February 2023, at least 4,800 minors had been sexually abused by priests over seven decades. In climate news, powerful storms have hit parts of the U.S. southeast. The states of Florida, Georgia, Ohio and South Carolina have issued flash flood warnings in some areas. Meanwhile, Kentucky and West Virginia are expected to face tornadoes, high winds and hailstorms. In Russia's Orenburg, the level of flood water continues to rise. The region was hit by the worst flooding in nearly a century after a nearby dam collapsed last week. Now the water level has reportedly reached about 36 feet in some parts. Nearly 12,000 houses in the region have been submerged in, wa in the waters. Local authorities have declared a state of emergency in the region. Sweden is seeing its earliest ever summer season on record. The country's meteorological agency has said that the summer season started on April 6th. This was after three Swedish towns reported average daily temperatures of 10 degrees Celsius for five straight days. The previous record for early summer was set in 1990 when summer officially started on the 10th of April. The La Nina weather phenomenon in the Pacific Ocean will likely develop in the second half of 2024. This is according to a US government weather forecaster. The La Nina refers to the periodic cooling of ocean temperatures in the central Pacific. It usually occurs every three to five years. The phenomenon causes drought in South American countries. Meanwhile, it brings heavy floods to Australia. The La Nina is also associated with good monsoon rainfall in India. U.S. authorities have banned salmon fishing off the coast of California for a second consecutive year. They've cited lower fish stocks for their decision. Authorities have said that the fish stocks were impacted due to low water levels and high temperatures. It is hoped that the ban will help the salmon stock recover. Residents in the uh, Colombian capital city of Bogota are taking uh, fewer showers and reducing their laundry. This is because authorities in the city have imposed a restriction on the usage of water. This comes amid a severe drought uh, aggravated by the El Nino climate phenomenon. Uh, Bogota has become the latest major city around the, around the world to face an acute water shortage. Fast fashion giants H&M and Zara have uh, come uh, under scrutiny, this time for their practices uh, that are harming the environment. According to a report by the environmental group Earthsight, the companies used cotton from farms linked to massive deforestation, land grabbing, corruption and violence in Brazil. On to business and tech news. Apple has warned certain iPhone users about a potential spyware attack. A threat notification was sent to select users in 92 countries. The firm has said that a mercenary spyware was trying to remotely comp compromise their iPhones using Apple ID. The firm has asked the affected users to enable lockdown mode on their devices. Lockdown mode disables key features on Apple devices to prevent hackers from exploiting personal data. Meanwhile, Apple is reportedly planning to overhaul its laptops, also known as uh, iMacs, with uh, artificial intelligence. The firm will add a new AI-enabled chip to all its iMacs. The production of the chip is expected to begin soon. Apple is reportedly expected to raise the updated uh, iMacs uh, later this year, release the updated iMacs later this year. Russian hackers have stolen emails between uh, the U.S. government between U.S. government officials and Microsoft. This is according to U.S. Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency. The agency has said that the hackers used Microsoft's customer system to get access to these emails. Earlier this year, Microsoft reported a cyber attack on its customer system. A hacker group called Midnight Blizzard was accused of stealing some of Microsoft's user data. This included the data of some U.S. government agencies as well. 
The investment firm Arc Investment Management has reportedly bought stakes of the chat GPT maker OpenAI. Arc Investment is led by American stock market investor, investor Kathy Wood. This comes as market investors are pouring billions of dollars into, the, into artificial intelligence firms. Arc Investment has also invested in another artificial intelligence startup called Anthropic. Instagram will soon start testing a new feature that blurs messages containing nudity. The, the, the platform will use machine learning to analyze whether images sent via direct message contain nudity. The move aims to protect minors on the social media platform. Instagram has faced criticism over its uh, effect on mental health of youngsters. Taylor Swift's songs are back on a Chinese social media platform, TikTok. This comes even as the singer's record label, Universal Music, is going through a dispute with the platform. Earlier this year, Universal Music removed all its songs from TikTok, uh, TikTok's contents. However, it seems that the platform reached a separate deal with Taylor Swift. As per Taylor Swift's contract with Universal, she owns the copyright to her songs. This allows her to control where her songs can be played. A U.S. Senate committee will hold a hearing on the ongoing safety crisis at a plane maker Boeing next week. The committee is expected to call an expert panel from, a US federal aviation, from the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration. In February, the expert panel released a report pointing out safety lapses at the firm. This comes as the plane maker has been under pressure after a series of uh, incidents with its uh, 737 jets. German airline Lufthansa and its cabin crew employees have reached a new wage agreement. The cabin crew workers will get over 17% uh, pay hikes under the new deal. They're expected to benefit, uh, this is expected to benefit nearly 19,000 Lufthansa employees. The new deal is also expected to end months of dispute between the airline and its workers' union. This has led to multiple strikes uh, at German airports. Lockheed Martin has won a $4 billion contract from the U.S. government. Under the deal, the arms manufacturer will work on a battle command system for the U.S. The system is expected to help the American Army against ballistic missile threats. Sam Bankman-Fried, the founder of cryptocurrency exchange FTX, is appealing his fraud conviction. Bankman-Fried's lawyers have filed a petition in this regard in a federal court in Manhattan. Last month, a court, U.S. court sentenced Bankman Free to 25 years in prison. He was found guilty of defrauding customers uh, of his uh, cryptocurrency exchange FTX. The firm went bankrupt in 2022 after years of mismanagement and billions in financial losses. Moving to sports, we start with cricket and the Indian Premier League. Mumbai Indians beat Royal Challengers Bengaluru by seven wickets yesterday. The RCB managed to pull off a decent score of 196 for eight, despite Virat Kohli being knocked out early. Mumbai pacer Jaspreet, Jaspreet Bumrah recorded the best bowling figure this season when he took a five-wicket haul. Uh, Mumbai Indians chased down the target of 197 with seven wickets and nearly five overs to spare. Mayank Yadav, the rising pace sensation at the IPL this season, may not play the upcoming matches for the Lucknow Supergiants. Medical tests have revealed that he has a swelling on his hip. Uh, Mayank Yadav was struggling on field during Lucknow's previous match against Gujarat Titans. During his first two IPL matches, he turned heads by consistently delivering balls over 150 km per hour. In football, Liverpool were humbled 3-0 uh, by Atalanta yesterday in the first leg of their Europa League quarter-final tie. Gianluca Scamacca scored a goal in each half of the match for Atlanta. Mario uh, Pasalic added a late third to wrap it up. Liverpool's hopes of winning the Europa League are now hanging by a thread. Al-Hilal thrashed al Ittihad 4-1 to lift the Saudi Super Cup yesterday. Brazilian forward Malcolm fired a double to help Al-Hilal earn the title. Ittihad's only goal came from uh, Abderrazak uh, Hamdala in the first half. Nasser uh, Al-Dosari scored late in stoppage time to seal the win for Al-Hilal. 
In tennis, men's world number one Novak Djokovic of Serbia has advanced to the quarterfinals of the Monte Carlo Masters. He, defend, he defeated Lorenzo Musetti of Italy 7-5-6-3 yesterday. The victory meant a redemption for Djokovic, who was earlier beaten at the same tournament by Musetti in 2023. The Serb will next meet Alex Demenoir of Australia in the next round. And in yet another setback, men's world number four Daniel Medvedev of Russia was dumped out of the Monte Carlo Masters. He was defeated by his compatriot Karen uh, Kachanov 3 6 5 7 in the round of 16 clash. During the second set, Medvedev had a heated exchange with chair officials. He was issued a point penalty for misconduct. Indian tennis star Sumit Nagal had, has crashed out of the Monte Carlo Masters. His dream run at the tournament was ended by world number no. 7 Holger Roon in the second round. Nagal lost the match 3-6-6-3-2-6 yesterday. India's campaign at the Badminton Asia Championships has ended. All Indian shuttlers will be, uh, were eliminated from the tournament in their round of 16 matches. PV Sindhu went down to world number 7 Han Yue 18-21, 21-13, 17-21 in the women's singles. Meanwhile, HS Pranoy lost to Chinese Taipei's Lin Chunyi, ranked 19th. Uh, he lost 21-18, uh, 21-11 in the men's singles. In Formula One, two-time world champion Fernando Alonso has signed a multi-year deal with Aston Martin. The 42-year-old will continue with the F1 franchise for the next two seasons. Alonso also uh, moved to Aston Martin uh, for the 2023 season and has claimed six podium finishes in his first eight races. O.J. Simpson, the American football uh, from the American Football League (NFL), has died at the age of 76. Simpson's death comes two months after he was diagnosed with cancer. He retired in 1979 to concentrate on a career in film and television. In 1995, Simpson was acquitted in a case that was deemed as the trial of the century. In entertainment news, Travis Kelsey says he still doesn't know how he won over Taylor Swift. The NFL star recently appeared on a podcast where he talked about his relationship with the singer. Kelsey revealed that Swift was not into sports when they first started dating. The footballer added that he now appreciates having the attention of Swifties. The couple reportedly started dating last year. Actor and producer Demi Moore has been honored by the US-based Women's Cancer Research Fund. She has won the Courage Award for raising awareness about breast cancer. Moore said she learned about the uh, shame and silence surrounding breast cancer while shooting for the, her film Five. The movie was released in 2011 and examined the impact of breast cancer on women's lives. Civil War director Alex Garland says the film has a connection with the storming of the U.S. Capitol, which took place in 2021. In a recent interview, Garland said that the incident made her more committed to the movie's story. Civil War has released in the U.K. today. It features Kirsten Dunst as a war photographer who covers a civil war that rips apart the U.S. The Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences has announced the date for the 2025 Oscars. The 97th Oscars will take place on the 2nd of March next year. Like previous years, the ceremony will take place at the Dolby Theatre in Hollywood. The nominations for next year's Oscars will be announced on the 17th of January 2025. Indian filmmaker Payal Kapadia's film has been selected for the 2024 Cannes Film Festival. The movie titled All We Imagine as Light has qualified for the competition section. This is the first Indian film to have qualified for the category in 30 years. Kapadia is best known for her documentary A Night of Knowing Nothing. The documentary won the Golden Eye Award at the 2021 edition of the Cannes Film Festival. Priyanka Chopra Jonas recently watched Dave Patel's directorial debut, Monkey Man. She took to Instagram to praise Patel's directorial skills and called them impressive. The actor also congratulated the cast of the film. Monkey Man is an action thriller that released in the US yesterday. The highly anticipated trailer of Bridgerton Season 3 has been released. It teases a possible romance between Nicola Coolan and Luke Newton's characters. 
The season will uh, debut on Netflix next month in two parts. Bridgerton, uh, the Bridgerton series is based on uh, Julia Quinn's Regency romance books. The first teaser of Mufasa, The Lion King was revealed at CinemaCon in Las Vegas. The musical drama film is set to release on the 20th of December. The makers of the film said its trailer will be released in the coming weeks. Marvel Studios has uh, revealed the first look of Captain America 4 at CinemaCon. The movie is titled Captain America Brave New World and features Anthony Mackie in the lead role. It will introduce Mackie as the first black Captain America. It is scheduled for release uh, next year. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle will launch two non-fiction series soon. The first show will see Markle enjoying the art of cooking, gardening and entertaining, while the second show will follow the world of professional polo, which uh, the British royal uh, Harry likes to play. Both untitled shows are in the early stages of production.